The sacred scriptures do not present Jesus as the eradicator of suffering and death, but they do tell the story of how Jesus shared in the mystery of human grief and death. The scriptures never satisfy our curiosity as to the reason and origin of suffering and grief, but they do tell us how to face death and grief and how to walk through them triumphantly. An example of what I'm trying to say is found in the 23rd Psalm, the Lord is my shepherd, which we sang the refrain with the cantor between the readings. The writer tells us of a time in his life when he walked through a dark valley. The language is figurative, but we know very well what it means. Life was at low ebb. He was living through days of darkness. When we find ourselves in similar circumstances of grief, of shame, or pain and anxiety, we can profit from reading and praying the 23rd Psalm. In the darkest moments in our lives, this Psalm draws our attention to three very important points. The first point, we need to remember the good times. In days of darkness, it is, very, it is a very difficult thing to keep life in true perspective. Sorrow is such a dominant emotion. It comes into our little corner of the world and it casts its spell of gloom over everything around us. It tends to crowd out everything else from our minds, and we find ourselves tempted to believe that this is the total picture. Life begins to look like one long, dark valley from beginning to end. And this, of course, is not true. And we need to remind ourselves of that. The sorrow we experience today is a very real part of life, but it is only a part. Look behind you and you will see some green pastures and some still waters. In days of darkness, do not forget the days of gladness. Hold on to those days and keep on believing in them. Remember the good times and talk about them. By the grace of God, we will pass through this valley and walk out into the sunlight again. The second thing we need to remember is that we are not alone. A careful reading of the 23rd Psalm reveals a very subtle but very significant change in the writer's awareness of God. In the good times, that is, the days of green pastures and still waters, he speaks of God only in the third person. For example, the Lord is my shepherd, he leads me, he refreshes my soul, he guides me. It's a description of something going on out there. But when he enters the dark valley, then he begins to speak of God in the second person. He stops talking about God and starts talking to God. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil, for you are at my side. Your rod and your staff give me comfort. You spread the table before me in the sight of all my foes. You anoint my head with oil, and my cup overflows. The suggestion seems to be that God comes nearer and becomes more real to the psalmist in the dark valley than he had ever before. That's a significant shift because it reverses our usual thinking. In days of darkness, you and I are often tempted to think that God has forgotten and forsaken us. 
we need to learn a lesson from this wise old man and open our eyes and minds to God when things seem so dark, when we need him most. We need to remember we are not alone. The Lord walks with us in the dark valley. The third thing we need to remember is that God's house is just beyond the valley. The psalmist prays, goodness and kindness shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. All of life takes on a new meaning when we, when we realize it leads to something eternally real. Out there before us is a destination that the psalmist called the house of the Lord forever. The road that takes us there can sometimes be a very difficult journey. It isn't all green pastures and still waters. Part of it passes through dark valleys. And we do not know why it is that way. But at least we can know that we have been given a destination. We are going somewhere. Life is not a dead-end street. It is a purposeful road that leads to an open door and a waiting, merciful Father. And even death is a part of the journey that takes us there. It was the prophet Isaiah who said, the house of the Father is a joyful place, a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wines, of rich food filled with marrow, of well-aged wines strained clear, a place that swallows up death forever where God will wipe away the tears from all faces. When we wander through dark valleys of shame, loneliness, grief, or loss, we need not be afraid. We can pray with the psalmist, the Lord is my shepherd, and know the consolation and the power and the compassion of our loving Father so that we too can pray, goodness and kindness shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Let us offer our petitions to our loving God. Gathered in prayer and convinced of God's kindness, let us now present our petitions in the name of Jesus. For Pope Benedict XVI, that God continue to bless him with good health, wisdom, and grace. We pray to the Lord. Amen. For world leaders called to exercise their authority with justice and concern for the needy, we pray to the Lord. For those who are filled with anxiety, who wander aimlessly with a feeling of darkness, that they may know the light and the love of Christ, we pray to the Lord. For ourselves gathered to hear and put into action God's healing love, we pray to the Lord. For the deceased, especially those who are dear to us, that God our Father welcome them home with a loving embrace, we pray to the Lord. Amen. Loving God, we place these prayers before you with confidence in your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. 